Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. Today we have some really exciting news and we begin with some casting reports for the Ahsoka show and Skeleton crew. Now this comes from the same source who told us that Nova Fies Mose and Charlie Tahan would be starring in Skeleton crew. So take it with a pinch of salt because none of these castings have been validated yet by bigger outlets like Variety. But I'm sure that will come in time. So the OP says, in the Ahsoka series, despite the fact that we're post Return of the Jedi, there'll be flashbacks to a Clone Wars era Ahsoka. That's right, the younger version that we've only seen in animation, but in live action, she's reportedly going to be played by Savannah Stain. Now Clone Wars era flashbacks are a dream come true for all Star Wars fans, especially in the context of Ahsoka, and if you think back to last year, Bryce Dallas Howard did say that Clone Wars fans are going to be rewarded in this show. Now while the casting would in reality be a perfect one, I've got to say I'm a little bit skeptical about this. It just sounds too convenient and like a fan casting rather than something official. I'm sure Dave Filoni would have considered the idea of casting a separate actress as a younger version of the character for flashbacks, but Savannah Stain seems too convenient, especially considering her recent role and prominence in House of the Dragon. But something really interesting that was pointed out to me is that in 2016, Savannah starred in a short called Fulcrum. Quite the coincidence if this casting rumour is true. Now this supposed casting of Savannah spread like wildfire across social media overnight. I saw it on Twitter, Reddit, it was being spoken about the fandom over, and I guess it's because we're really excited as Star Wars fans to see what the show's going to have on offer, not just for Ahsoka's current journey, but her past as well. If you've got a live action show called Ahsoka and Dave Filoni's helming it, you've got to include some elements from the Clone Wars and Rebels as well, especially in flashbacks, because her experiences and journeys in those animated shows inform to a large extent where she is today. So I personally really hope it's true, and just think of the possibilities if we're doing Clone Wars flashbacks. Now I should say there was a wild rumour the other day that Hayden Christensen was seen on set with his Revenge of the Sith era robes. Now we know Hayden's probably going to appear as a false ghost, and we know Darth Vader's going to appear in flashbacks, but imagine if we get Anakin flashbacks as well, and there have been whisperings that Obi-Wan is going to feature too. I mean just imagine Obi-Wan, Anakin and Ahsoka in live action in flashbacks. That is a prequels and Clone Wars fans dream. So let's move on now to the next piece of casting news. They go on to say that Angelica Houston, yes, the Angelica Houston, one of the most legendary actresses in the industry, is going to have a small but key role in Ahsoka 2. Now for me, this is the one I'm most excited about, given the fact that I grew up obsessed with the Addams Family, and if this rumour is true, making Star Wars correctly pointed out that this will be her second Lucasfilm role. Because back in 1986, she starred alongside Michael Jackson and Dick Sean in Captain EO. No character details are known at this stage, but I could definitely imagine Angelica playing Mother Talsin in a flashback. And if we do get something related to the Night Sisters, is there a chance it's also related to Morgan Elsbeth? We never saw her die at the end of chapter 13, and I think that's because she told Ahsoka the information Ahsoka desired about Thrawn. The dots are slowly connecting. So moving on, they also mention that Brandon Suhu is said to have a recurring role in Ahsoka as well. So a few big names there. And on the skeleton crew side of things, Radha Mitchell and Trinity for two, the wrestler better known as Naomi, are going to be starring in that show alongside Jude Law. Really exciting stuff, the prospect of a Clone Wars era Ahsoka in flashbacks is going to be insane. And when I saw the addition of Angelica Houston, I jumped out my seat. There is so much talent and so much experience there. And so now my dear Maglorians, time to speak about Andor, and specifically Season 2. So yesterday we got the halfway episode of Season 1, Episode 6, The Eye. I did my full breakdown and review, I broke down some of the key themes, where the show goes from here, and also mentioned some historical context relating to the Highland clearances. So please go check that out if you haven't done so, but today we're going to be talking about Season 2, because some of the stars of the show have teased some crossovers for the second season. Let's dive into this. Andor has been packed with one of the biggest Star Wars ensemble casts ever put to screen, with characters new and old tagging along for the Rebel Adventure, and now two of the series' villainous stars have opened up about how it all connects in the future. So at this stage, based on previous interviews, we know that Cyril Khan and Dedra Moreau are going to be teaming up at some stage, but in a new interview with Denise Goff and Carl Sola, they've said it's not going to be until the end of Season 1 and into Season 2, so this is what they say. Carl Sola says, yeah, absolutely. And then Goff chimes in, us certainly, and then I 
think that's what's so clever about what Tony Gilroy has done, because also it was really helpful during the pandemic that none of us really had to work together, so we could all be safe and film separately, but I think that will start to happen certainly towards the end of season 1 and into season 2. You'll see how they all kind of start to cross paths, and Sola says, yeah, they're all connected, but they don't really know it yet. So where we're at in the story at the moment is Cyril Khan being back with his mother. The Primors were sent home, but Cyril's uncle is connected in the Empire, and Cyril's mother's now going to hook them up. So Cyril is probably going to be involved in the Empire at some stage, and then eventually his path will cross with Dedra Moreau and the ISB. The Andal stars also discussed whether they consider their morally questionable characters to be truly villains, but Carl Soler explains they're heroes of their own struggles and their own stories. This is what he said, you know we were speaking about this, and I think I definitely view Cyril as a hero of his own struggle and of his own journey. Part of the way into making both of our characters was trying to find what makes them tick. What are the reasons they are the way they are, the choices they make, the sacrifices they make for their own idea of the greater good, and saying all of that, it's really fun to play a villain. Denise Goff adds, they're not really nice, they're not heroes, but equally you can't approach a character just by thinking they're either bad or good. There are many shades in both of them, and I think the reason they find each other is because they're both doing the same thing, they're looking for control and power to feel a stronger sense of self. And I think that can make people quite dangerous when they're looking for anything outside themselves to make them feel like they have worth. And what's really interesting about what Denise Goff says is the many shades of good and bad. And it plays into what Tony Gilroy is trying to show us with this series. That good is a point of view and everyone sees themselves as the good guy. And on top of this, good people can do bad things and morality not just in fiction but in the real world can be very complicated. And in many ways that's why I'm really excited to see Saul Guerrero in this series. He represents something very unique within Star Wars. How a hero can go too far and resemble the enemy. And speaking of moral complexities within the Andor series, I'm curious to learn more about Nemec's manifesto and if that's what's going to be what changes Cassian's heart. All I'm saying guys is I love the many avenues this show is exploring. And finally, to add to this point, Sola describes what it's like playing a normal person in the Empire's fascist regime and not really knowing where your place is. He says, when you're looking for your place in the confines of a fascist regime, things get dangerous pretty quickly, but it comes from that sense of not really knowing where your place is and that structure is so complex complete, and so controlling it, I think it's much more difficult to try and find your way outside a system like that. And as I say guys, it goes back to Tony Gilroy's point of not everyone in the Empire is a bad person, but they're a cog in an awfully powerful machine. And Kyle finishes by saying, it takes more empathy and compassion, but if you shut those things off, you can find your way to the dark side quite quickly. Some really interesting comments there. I'm super excited for the second half of Andor Season 1, Episode 7 next week. As I say, my dear Maglorians, if you haven't done so already, Ready, please go and check out my full episode breakdown. But with that said, that brings us to the end of today's Star Wars news update. Share your thoughts in the comments down below guys. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. May the force be with you always. I'm Star Wars Meg, have a good one.